Today on The Joy of Editing, there's been some new features added to Curves and HSL Color in Lightroom. I want to get a look at those today. Plus, I want to give you some tips. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with yours truly, Dave Kelly. Thanks for joining me today. Today, I want to take a look at HSL Color and Curves. In Lightroom, there's been some new features added here, and they're really good, and I think they'll be very helpful for you. So we're going to get a look at those today. Plus, I have some tips for you, both with HSL Color as well as Curves. Let's get started. Let's start out with HSL Color. So let me click on HSL Color, and this is a really cool new feature. Now, we have, right now, I'm set up for all, but of course, you could use just Hue or Saturation or Luminance. But for me, I like to use all. This way I have hue, saturation, and luminance all here together for me. But however you like to work. This first new feature works whether you're in hue, saturation, luminance, or all. Now, depending if you're on a Mac or a PC, on a Mac you would hold your Option key down. On a PC, I believe it's the Alt key. So I'm going to hold my Option key down. And let's go under Saturation. I'm going to hold the Option key down. And what I'll do is click on Red. And you'll notice all we see are the red colors. Everything else is in black and white. If I click, hold the option key still down and click on orange, now we can see the orange hues. And if I click on yellow, we'll see the yellow hues. Same thing with green, aqua, blue, purple, or magenta. And that holds true if you're in hue. The same thing will happen here. But this is really nice because you could really see where those colors are sitting at. And, you know, you don't have to guess. So if there's a color not being used, you're not going to see it. Like right now, we don't see much aqua in here. We see a little bit. Let's try blue. Of course, we can see the blues. And let's check on purples. We can see the purples. Everything is isolated. And here's magentas over on these cabbages over here. You see that? And again, also for luminance, if I hold my Option or Alt key down and click on red, you can see the reds. Again, the oranges, yellow, so on and so forth. Now, for this image, I do see all of those different hues in here. But what if I had another image? Let's click on this one. I'm going to work in the saturation group. And we're going to click on all of these different hues holding the Option or Alt key down. So let me do that. Let me Option or Alt click on red. And we can see the red right there. Now let's click on orange. And we can see the orange. Let's click on yellow. And of course, we can see yellow. Now let's click on green. Of course, I knew there'd be green. Here's aqua. Nothing in aqua. Do you see that? There may be a little on that center. I think it's a lipstick. Looks like a little bit of green right in there. When I click on aqua, can you see that? It's hard to see. Not much there. So adjusting it would not do too much to it. And let's click on blue option. Click on blue. Here's purple. And let's option click on magenta. Now on that last, let's call that a lipstick. You can see a little bit of magenta on the tip of that. Do you see that there? So if we look at this lipstick here, we can see it's a little desaturated right here. If I wanted to bring that up, now I know right there, I know that's going to be magenta. So I can take this magenta and I can pull this to the right and I can add some color right in there. You see that some saturation and now that blends in better. So that's kind of nice. And I, and I do like that feature. Now that same feature works with the target adjustment tools on here as well. I'm still staying with saturation here, but it works with you or luminance as well. So let's click on this target adjustment tool. If you hold down the option or alt key and hover, you'll see different hues being highlighted. So check this out. So right now I'm on the background and you'll notice magenta is highlighted. If I hover over orange, you'll see the orange is highlighted or over yellow, yellow is highlighted and over green, green will be highlighted. But now if I option or alt and click right here, then we can see there's green. If I hover over the tip here, you can see magenta is highlighted, but if I option or alt and click here, you can see the actual magenta tones that are in there right now, okay? And of course, if I go over blue, you can see blue is highlighted under the saturation group. And now if I click, you can see that actual blue, okay? Now, of course, I can drag down and make the adjustment or up. But I like to make the adjustment by actually looking at the image and seeing what's happening there. If you hold the Alter Option key down, you can still make an adjustment that way as well. Whatever, whatever really works for you. But that's pretty cool that you can hold the Alter Option key down 
and hover over different areas and look over on that panel and you can see what colors will be affected there. Or while holding that alter option key down, you can click and then you can see the actual hues that will be affected by your adjustment. And now here is a tip for you. I went ahead and adjusted the hue, saturation, and luminance at different settings, not for any particular reason, but I just wanted to show you this tip. If you want to reset any one of these groups here, if you hold down either your option or alt key, you'll notice you'll see reset hue as well as reset saturation and reset luminance. And then click on any of those to reset. And that's nice, but there's a better way. Go over any of the group names like hue. If I double click this, left double click it with my mouse, I can reset that entire group. Same with saturation, left double click it, reset it as well as luminance. So that's a little tip for you. Again, you can hold your option key down or alt key and the reset for each one of the groups come up and then you can just click it but it's quicker just to double click on the actual group itself. Now that holds true for the sliders as well. So if we take like, say like aqua, I change aqua, change the tint of aqua, change the tint of yellow. Now this holds true for any group. So let me go ahead and add some more green saturation here. And under luminance, let's use uh, blue. Let me darken up the blues like that, okay? So here's my tip. You can either double click right here where you make the adjustment and that'll reset or you could come to the name in any one of the groups and double click that name and that'll reset that one particular slider like let me double click aqua double click uh, yellow and there you can see they're all set back so that's another way of just uh, working quickly to reset an individual slider and now I'll show you another change in the HSL color panel. So right now I'm on HSL. So let's click on color. And in color, we could come here and we have this all broken down into these different hues, right? So we could come here and we could adjust the hue of red like that. Okay. And of course, you can hold your option or alt key down here and that same holds true. You can actually see what will be affected. So if I come down here to green, hold my option or alt key down and you'll notice you also see the resets here. So I could come up here to red and click the reset and I can reset that. Or again, if I just double click red, I'll reset that whole red group right there. Okay. So let's go to green. And if I hold my option key down and add saturation to the green, we can see there's the green and now I'll add saturation to it. But notice anytime I change any one of these adjustments in here, this is something new. You see, I worked with green and you can see a little dot there. Also note the white dot under all. Anytime you change any of those settings, a white dot will appear under the all. So if I would go ahead and reset this saturation, you notice that dot went out and the green dot went out. So let me come here to saturation for blue. I'm gonna hold the option key down and click on saturation so you can see there's the blues right there. Now I'm gonna adjust this to the right and as soon as I do, you get a little indicator here and here letting us know that the color Overall color has been changed, but also I just targeted blue. If I come to say purple, let me hold the option or alt key down. I don't have to. I mean, I can just click and drag this or I can hold the option or alt key down and see what I'm affecting here. And now you'll notice purple has a little white dot under it. So that is a new feature. And I find this very helpful. It lets you know what colors you've targeted right here. And now if I want to reset blue and purple, now of course if I hold the option or alt key down, you'll see reset blue and then I could click that and it'll reset it or reset purple and click that. Or just double click blue and everything in that group gets reset and double click purple and everything in that group will be reset as well. So that's really quick and easy. But that's another new uh, addition whenever you change any one of these sliders in any one of these shoes little dots will appear underneath hues that you've changed and then whenever you alter any one of the hues you'll always get a dot under the all circle i think these new features in hsl and color will be very helpful and i hope these little tips i gave you will also help you and let me know what you think of these new features in the comment section below i'd love to hear from you by the way if you're enjoying the tutorial today please give it a like and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe that really helps me out and don't forget to click that bell notification icon too you'll get notified whenever i put up new tutorials and now let's look at the new feature in curve so let me go ahead and close i'm just going to click hsl color and close that and click on tone curve and let me show you the new feature here which i think 
you're really going to like. Oftentimes with curves adjustments, we like to adjust contrast and we do that by pulling up in the highlights and maybe darkening up the shadows a little bit. Whenever you darken, a lot of times you're going to get extra saturation. And here's the new feature, and this is going to be really handy, and I love this already, and that is Refine Sat or Refine Saturation. And so basically, you can see it's up at 100% by default, but you can ease off on that saturation by dragging this to the left. And let me take it the whole way over to the left. It will not totally reduce saturation, but it'll just desaturated enough to get it looking pretty normal for you. So you have a lot of flexibility here. Think of this as fine tuning the saturation after you've made your curve adjustment. So then we can adjust this to the point where we think, you know what, that looks really good. Because if it was up at 100%, it would be oversaturated. So I can just peel this back a little bit. And then you say, oh, there it is. And then if you click this eye and hold, left click and hold, there's the before and there's the after. So it's not oversaturated. In fact, I may just pull it back a little bit more. But that is the new big feature right here. And here's the other new feature to Curves. Whenever you copy or add a preset, let me just click on Copy. You can now choose under Curve. Let me just uh, click Check None for now. Under Curve, you can, if you click Curve right here, it'll select both parametric and point curves because there's two types of curves. There's a parametric curve and a point curve. So let me uncheck this. But say you just wanted to add the parametric curve, you could just click on this or the point curve, whatever you want, and then click copy. I'm going to click cancel for now, but that is a new addition where when you're copying or creating presets, you have your choice of having both curves or just the parametric or just the point curve or no curve. It's totally up to you. And now for some tips when using curves. Now here's a tip for you. I want to reset this curve, okay? So if I hold the Option or Alt key down, you'll notice a reset comes up here. You don't see that unless you hold Option or Alt down, and then you could click Reset. But here's a tip for you. Just double-click Adjust, and it resets the entire curve. So I wanted to point that out. And by the way, that also works for parametric curves. So let me click on parametric curve, and let's just make a couple adjustments here just for the heck of it. They don't really mean anything, but I just want to show you something. And then again, I can hold the Option or Alt key down and Reset will come up. Or I could just double click Adjust and that will reset my parametric curve. And now for another tip, but I want to start with Point Curve. So let me click on the Point Curve. And if you click on the Target tool here and you hover over any area of the image, you might want to set a point. So wherever you hover and then left click, you'll set that point. You see, I set that point. So if I want to, on the shadow area, if I left click right here, there's that shadow point. And if I come right here and click, there's that point. Now I could come over here and I could adjust all these different points and get the right setting that I would like. Something like that. Okay, so let me double click adjust. Remember, that resets everything. And then of course, you can always just click on the target tool again left click and drag up with your mouse to lighten it, as you can see right there, and drag down to darken. And then on this area, if I left click and drag, and if I wanna lighten it, I'll just pull up on this area, you see right like that. So you could do it that way, but you could set a point just by hovering over an area and just left clicking it, and you've set that point right there, which can be very handy. And remember to reset, just double click adjust if you wanna reset it back to no adjustment. Before I move on to parametric, anytime you make any adjustment here, okay, let's just do like a contrast adjustment and I'll pull back on the refine saturation just so it's not oversaturated. You notice there's a little dot underneath this point curve right here. And if I come over and adjust one of the color channels like red, and let's say I pull up on red a little bit to add a little bit of red in here, you notice there's a dot under the red letting you know that you've made adjustments with red. And let's click on blue, and I'll just add a little bit of yellow into this image like this. And you can see we have a dot here. So this lets us know what we've used, which is really handy as well. And again, let me double click, adjust, and set that back. And now let me click on parametric, and I'll show you a few things here, and we'll be done. The parametric curve is really nice because it breaks uh, the image down to regions like highlights. If I want to lighten up my highlights, I could pull this to the right or darken them, pull it to the left. And again, you could double click here on the slider or if I double click on highlights, it'll set it back as well. And of course, if I have a bunch of different settings adjusted here, 
like lights, darks, and shadows, all the different regions, which is really nice. I really love the parametric curve. If you want to see some tutorials on that, let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, I can also double click adjust and reset everything back. But here's what I really want to show you. Here's my little tip. If you click on the target adjustment tool and you hover over here, you'll notice the region that you're on will highlight. See right now I'm in the light area. If I hover over the top of this bird's head here in this dark area, you can see that that is a shadow region. If I hover over right here, you can see that's a dark region. If I hover over this area, you can see that's a highlight. And maybe right here, that's a light region. Okay, and then you could left click and drag up to lighten this dark area right here. Or darken it down even more, whatever you want to do. And so we could come here on this background. I can left click and say I want to make this a little bit darker. Something like that. And let's take this area, which is a shadow area. And let me left click and drag up and lighten that up a little bit like so. And here's another little tip for you. You see these right here, these little triangles. This is in the shadow area, this is in the midtone area, and this is in the light area. So you can use these to fine tune. So all you need to do here is just left click and drag this to the left. You'll be dealing with the shadows, you see that? You can move it to the left, you can move it to the right. And think about this as like some fine tuning adjustments. And then you can come to the midtones and maybe just fine tune that midtone a little bit. This can be very, very handy here. And then come to the to the light section and we can drag this to the right or to the left and adjust that light area. But note, when I really drag this to the left, that bumps all those triangles over. But this is really just for fine tuning and just play around with it. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you start playing with this, you can find you can really fine tune your adjustments, but you just slide them to the left and right. And again, if you get too close to one of the other sliders, and you touch it, well, not even touch it, but get close to it, you see that? It'll move that mid-tone over as well. So don't forget about these guys. Now, when you double-click adjust, it resets the entire parametric curve, but it does not affect these little triangles here. To reset these guys, you need to double-click on each one of them to reset it back to its default position. In other words, this one defaults at 25, this one at 50, and this one at 75. Don't forget about this target adjustment tool. So remember, just click on it and hover over any area. It will find the region. And then you just left click and drag up or down to lighten or darken. And double click, adjust to reset if you need to. My favorite way of adjusting the parametric is just to start out maybe with highlights and drag this to the right or to the left and stop where I think it looks good. And then I'll go to lights and I'll move it one way or the other. And then I'll go to darks and maybe I'll lighten up the darks a little bit. And then I'll go to shadows and go this way too. And then I'll come with these triangles and I'll just tweak these a little bit. You know, move them to left or right just to see if they help. Like there. And I'll try this highlight one here. Maybe right there. And remember the eye here, if you left click and hold, you'll see there's the before and there's the after. Now with the parametric, you do not get the refined saturation adjustment. You're only going to get that with the curves. And you'll notice it's grayed out right now because it only turns on when you actually come here and actually make an adjustment like this, uh, add a little bit of contrast. And now I have the refine saturation that comes up. And there it is everyone. I love what Lightroom has done to tone curves and the HSL color adjustment. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing!